Hi, I'm Ken Lammers. Welcome to Minor League Matters. Uh, recently, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts about, well, the various sports that I really follow. Soccer, baseball, baseball, and hockey. And uh, the soccer podcasts have been really kind of interesting because they've been trying to make the case that they've cracked the top four. And so we're going to look today at the uh, actual attendance level at the various sports in the United States. So let's get cracking. Okay, so like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts about different sports, but a lot, you know, started out listening to a lot of them about baseball and then kind of picked up. Uh, soccer ones, and then I've picked up a couple hockey ones along the way. Um, the soccer ones are kind of interesting to listen to because they keep trying to make the case, or they have tried to make the case, and a few of them I've listened to recently, that, you know, they've caught up with baseball, which, no, that's just humorous, but, uh, and, or that they've passed the NHL, and they are now one of the top four. And, you know, I thought there might be a case for that. So what I did was I went and looked up and uh, got all the figures from all sorts of places all over the web about, uh, you know, the last season of each of the major sports in the United States, baseball, football, basketball, soccer, and uh, baseball, football, basketball, soccer, and hockey. And I put them all together. This is all rounded numbers, so nothing is absolutely correct. But I think they're good enough for what, what we're doing today. And let's start out by looking at the one that uh, brought us here, right? The soccer. Soccer in the United States, Major League Soccer in the last season, averaged 22,000 people in the stands per game. Uh, it had 8 million attendees overall. That's a, that's a hefty bump, actually, uh, particularly in the average attendance because... Uh, they had Atlanta just kind of blow up on them. I mean, you know, it had always been Seattle had been number one for attendance, and then Atlanta just came out of nowhere. Well, it may not have come out of nowhere. Actually, they probably worked really hard to get there, but Atlanta just has huge crowds, right? So uh, they brought their numbers up something. Fierce. Now, the USL had 2 million last year. Uh, that's the Tier 2 team, the AAA level of, uh, of soccer. And uh, they averaged 4,000 people per game, right? Uh, they have uh, had some pretty big successes on their own. Uh, Cincinnati just boomed. You know, uh, I think that one was really unexpected. Uh, Cincinnati just boomed. Cincinnati is a great sports town. They, they support everything, including the Bungles. So, you know... <laughs> They are a, a sports town. The NASL, we're not going to talk about the NASL too much. They're dead now. The MLS and uh, United States Soccer Federation have managed to kill them because, you know, they were a nuisance. Or at least it appears because they were a nuisance. Oh, we can't have that pro-rel stuff, you know. Um, so, <laughs> they're gone. And, that, and then, finally, we have the National Women's Soccer League, which had 610,000 people go there. And an average of 5,000. Uh, fairly significant. Impressive. So, that's soccer. Now let's look at the others. Assuming it will work. Ah, there we go. Okay, so baseball. Uh, baseball is the big dog in the room, right? As far as attendance goes. Last year... 73 million people went to baseball games, went to Major League Baseball games. This is not including any of their minors. Major League Baseball games in the United States. They averaged 31,000 people per game, uh, which is pretty impressive considering that they play day after day after day after day. It's not an event support like soccer or, or football where there's one day a week and everybody kind of works around to get to that one day. No, this is every day they got to fill stands, right? Uh, and it's not easy. You can see this picture here. Now, this is an independent baseball team, uh, the Lake Erie Crushers, which I 
suggest anybody who's out there go watch because they were pretty cool last year when I went to them. Um, but they're several, several hours away from me, so I can't get back, unfortunately. Uh, minor League Baseball had 41 million people went to and went and watched minor league baseball and but there's that average out to 4,000 people per game you you have to understand though that includes things like you know the rookie leagues and the, and the short season leagues where you know if you get a thousand people or 1500 people in a lot of those stadiums that's a capacity crowd or that's a huge crowd right so the average is brought down by that sort of thing and there it also includes things like uh, the buoy creek astros which are temporarily in one place so before they move to another next year and uh that doesn't make for good crowds either uh and then the independent league six million people independent leagues six million people went there um that averaged out to 2500 uh people per persons per game um Again, this is like you have your established independent leagues, the Atlantic League, the American Association, the Frontier League, uh, that, you know, are carrying uh, bigger crowds. And then you have people like the groups like the Pecos League or the Pacific Association uh, or that guy who made a league in uh, Detroit at a uh, at, at one stadium with several teams, right? Um, they're... You know, those are not doing so great. Great, So that averages out good leagues and bad leagues. Uh, now, breaking down the affiliated baseball, I didn't break down unaffiliated. I'm sorry if you're out there, St. Paul Saints or whomever. You know, uh, breaking down the affiliated baseball, you end up with AAA, which is, you know, the Tier 2 uh, baseball league, uh, had 14 million people and averaged 6,600. Double A, the Tier 3 Baseball League, uh, 9 million people over the year, averaging 4,500. Uh, Advanced A, or what I call A+, plus, got uh, 4.5 million and averaged 2,300 people per game, person per game. And Single A got 7 million last year and averaged 3,500 people, persons per game. Um, I did not go through rookie and short league. They're not going to be competitive in anything we're looking at here, so I just kind of let them go. Um, now, as we look forward, that's baseball. Huge attendance numbers uh, and pretty good average. Um, then there's football, and these are the NFL numbers, right? Now, as we all understand, or anybody who's looked at this understands, these numbers are la-la land numbers, right? The NFL does not report actual gate, or who actually comes through the gate. What the NFL reports is how many tickets they've sold. And that NFL does that and benefits doing that because there's a whole bunch of uh, companies out there that buy blocks and blocks of tickets. Some of them are like uh, big you know, IBM or something that buys a bunch of seats so that they got places to wine and dine and send people and their CEOs and that. Some of them are just ticket buying companies that buy them up and then intend to use them and sell them for more than the price on the ticket, right? Uh, and unfortunately, those guys got took a bath last year, I'm pretty sure, because uh, there were a lot of empty seats last year. Uh, for all sorts of various reasons, economic reasons, burnout, uh, the fact that everything's on TV, uh, the fact they had some sort of kerfuffle with the president, the whole, well, we know what that was about. And, uh, you know, they just, they had a lot of empty stadium last year, right? To the point that they didn't pan up during football games to show you the crowd. I mean, we all remember what it used to be like. They panned up and showed you the crowd a lot, right? People screaming and hollering and the pretty girl in the stands and all that sort of stuff, right? No, not anymore. They're not doing that stuff. Uh, you know, they didn't show you the stands for nothing. Um, and the reason for that, anybody who's got Twitter knows what the reason for that is. They were all sorts of pictures put out there by regular folks showing how empty the stands were. And, uh, the, uh, and, you know, you often accompanied by the tweet, you know, they just told us that this was a sellout, you know, and half the stands are empty. Um, so these numbers from the NFL are not accurate. They're not anywhere near accurate. 
and we know this. But on the other hand, uh, you know, even if you were to cut twenty thousand from this, right? And we know that some teams still did well. I mean, I'm sure the Packers did, and uh, you know, uh, and Dallas, etc. Uh, but uh, and Patriots. But uh, sixty-five thousand. Even we cut twenty out of that, it's a huge number. Cut thirty out of it, it's a huge number. Thirty-five. That'd still be thirty-five thousand people per game. So the NFL ain't hurting. Uh, it's just got a lot of empty space. Okay, surprisingly, to me at least, the NHL came in, you know, Hockey League came in third for attendance. Um, it was the, uh, well, actually it came in second. It had more actual attendees than the NFL did at 20 million. Um, and it averaged 16,000 people in the stands. Now, that's interesting, uh, you know, as we all know, or anybody who follows hockey, they play about three games a week, uh, about half, you know, half the week they're playing. Uh, and then the Tier 2 or AAA version of hockey, the AHL, they pulled in 6.5 million people and averaged 6,000 people per, week, per game. Uh, the ECHL... The third tier, the double-A version of hockey, pulled in 4 million people and averaged 4,000 pe persons per game. And then we get to the SPHL, which is not affiliated with the NHL or these other upper leagues, although people go from them back and forth. Uh, but the SPHL is basically uh, a an A-league, right? So they carried about 800,000 people in the stands, um, which is surprising since some of them really like if you've been to uh, you know the havocs they pack it right i've seen a lot of ice bear games that are pretty packed too but okay they average three thousand uh they've got some that don't do so well fayetteville for instance um and then we get to the bottom uh the fhl which had 140,000 people and average 792 this is basically the equivalent of rookie league uh, hockey or rookie league baseball it's hockey um, FHL may be up this year because this year the, uh, they've start they've got the Carolina Thunderbirds and they are selling a lot of tickets and having a lot of fun. If you get anywhere near Winston-Salem, the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds, that's where it is. So don't, you know, uh, if you get anywhere near it, go watch. It's fun. They have a lot of fun. And then we get basketball, right? Um. 15 million people last year, which is less than hockey, surprisingly, uh, but 18,000 on average, which is more than hockey. Uh, the, and it's a day-to-day -day sport like uh, baseball. Uh, they're they're kind of nascent uh, minor league, D League, which has now become the G League because they sold their name of the entire league to Gatorade. Which is just amazing to me. Um, and it had 1.5 million people all year long. And averaged 1,300. Um, interesting. Uh, I think that league has uh, potential to really grow. It's It seems like it's, uh, it's not really there yet. But it's growing. And uh, it could turn into something in, uh, pretty good in the future. Now, so we've gone through them all. Now let's look at actual actual attendance and who's what. Well, for actual attendance, my uh, Major League Baseball just blows them all out of the water. It's 73 million people went last year. There's nobody's anywhere near that, right? Uh, surprising to me was that hockey came in second with 20 million. Now I know that every Canadian that is anywhere near a hockey uh, arena when a when a game starts is obligated, um, you know, by some sort of oath and or bloodline or genes or whatever to go to a hockey match. But you know that kind of gets balanced out when you get down to you know Arizona or uh, Carolina. Although I do like the Carolina Hurricanes um, in in the United States. But 20 million is an impressive number for that. And considering that it's an arena sport, too, where there can only be so many tickets and so many seats to be close enough to see what's going on, 
Um, 20 million is pretty good. Uh, the NFL, 17 million, right? Um, that's a lot of sold seats per game, but only 17 million. The NBA, 15 million. Okay, that's uh, again, the NBA is like the NHL, it's an arena sport. You have to keep your seats pretty close to the court so people can see what's going on, right? Interesting, after we get past these top four professional leagues, then we head into, or well, they're all professional leagues, top four, top tier leagues, then we get baseball, AAA baseball, the tier two league in, in baseball, 14 million. AA baseball, the tier three league, in baseball is nine million and then we get to major league soccer so as on terms of pure attendance <clears throat> mls has not cracked it and uh it's just not and uh you know we go past mls major league soccer we get single a baseball seven million um then we get ahl which is the uh, american hockey league which is the equivalent of uh, AAA baseball for hockey or Tier 2 sport for hockey, $6.5 million. And then we get, at the bottom, we get uh, Advanced A baseball, $4.5 million. So on pure attendance levels, baseball is killing it, right? Um, you know, and now this doesn't match out when we get to things like, you know, TV contracts. Obviously, in the TV contracts, the NFL and the NBA are doing really well, right? The NFL may not be by the time its next negotiations come up, but currently, the NFL and the NBA are booming as far as being on TV, and they are, um, well, probably only matched by their college uh, versions. I mean, the NFL's biggest competitor is probably really the SEC football, right? If there's an Alabama-LSU game on at the same time that there's a Cowboys-Patriots <clears throat> game on, I'm not sure which one of those gets bigger crowds, right? Uh, and I'm not sure which one of those gets a bigger uh, TV audience either. So that's kind of out there. Uh, same thing for the NBA. You know, if the top two teams in the NBA have a game and Kentucky and Duke have a game or Duke and North Carolina have a game that day, I'm not sure which gets more eyes. I'm probably watching the college game. But other than that, they've got the run of it. And they are, um, lots, they're on TV a lot. Um, NHL does pretty well. It has its own. Of course, in Canada, there's Hockey Night in Canada. And uh, for the rest of us, there's hockey on pretty much every night of the week if you want to watch it um major league baseball you don't see as much on tv anymore but they've been really innovative about getting baseball to you and they've been really good about it both for the major league level and the minor league level i can't talk up enough the point that you can buy for 50 or 60 bucks all the minor league games for triple a double A and most of them for single A and advanced, well, advanced A. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Um, now let's look, now we've looked at the absolute numbers. Let's look at the averages, which are going to be different. That, that's going to shuffle this quite a bit. The average, of course, the NFL comes on top. It is 65,000 people per game. Now, we know this is an imaginary number. That's not the true attendance number. But even if we cut that by, you know, half, it's 32 and a half, which makes it, you know, the biggest, still the biggest average in sports in the United States. So I'm assuming it didn't, you know, with uh, some teams doing well and drawing in crowds, that cutting it by half is not really what would happen. So assume 40,000, even at worst case scenario for the NFL, it's still more than everybody else. Uh, Major League Baseball, 31,000 per game. Um, fairly impressive. The uh, Major League Soccer then, this is where Major League Soccer gets in. At 22,000 per game, with the bump that Atlanta gave them last year, they're in pretty good shape as far as actual attending numbers um 
we'll see about the Atlanta thing. Uh, as we all know, Atlanta is one of those towns where every sport looks awesome in the beginning and has great attendance and great support and then falls off so that five to ten years later you're going, where is everybody? You know, uh, see all the NHL attempts. Um, but, okay, so then we get down to the NBA, 18,000 per game, and the NHL, 16,000 per game. These numbers are not <clears throat> as bad as they might seem. Again, these are arena sports where you have to be fairly close to the actual field of play to watch what's going on. I mean, a hockey puck is small, guys. Uh, you have to be close enough to see what's going on with that, and that limits the size of your arena. Um, now, some of them do, like, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets and make your seats two-thirds of what a uh, regular human being needs to sit in uh, so they can fit more people in. But generally... Um, the teams are pretty decent about all this, and it you know their numbers are are pretty good for what they are. Uh, and then we end up in in the minors, AAA baseball sixty six hundred, AHL, you know, the top level minor league hockey league six thousand, and then we get a really interesting one. The National Women's Soccer League at five thousand comes in as eighth on the top ten attended leagues in the United States. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's really good, actually. And by the way, folks, I do recommend watching the NWSL. Uh, they don't fall down and scream bloody murder as much and pretend that they've been maimed for life. They just play soccer. And if you as a guy, you know, women don't have a problem with this, but if you as a guy can turn on Lifetime without anybody finding out you turned on Lifetime, I uh, suggest that you go watch it. Uh, double A baseball, 4,500. And then at the end, we get uh, USL, the top tier, the tier two soccer league, the equivalent of triple A soccer, and uh, ECHL, the tier three uh, hockey league, the equivalent of double uh, A hockey, uh, had 4,000 attendees, which means that uh, the USL is operating. At a level below most, or you know, uh, the uh, uh, upper level baseball and hockey, and it's actually at the second tier down from uh, ECHL. And I like USL. Actually, I prefer USL to MLS quite a bit. Uh, but that's the reality of it. Okay. Now. Let's look at what this all, how this all compares to like uh, the leagues over in Europe. La Liga. These are basically the three biggest leagues out there. I mean, I looked at the numbers for the Italian league, Serie A, and it didn't seem to have really high numbers comparatively. A few teams, but not not a lot. Uh, I'm, I think it probably would have been about where La Liga is, maybe lower. And for all I know, the Turkish league and the French league. You know, they have huge numbers, right, for all I know. Um, I would be surprised, though. La Liga, it's a Spanish league, was, and you had a couple of really uh, highly attended uh, teams, like Real Madrid, etc. But then it balanced out really badly towards the bottom, and they only get 20,000, which puts them below Major League Soccer as far as attendance. Congratulations, Major League Soccer. You're in the running. Um, although, I'm pretty sure La Liga's uh, TV contract is better than yours. So, don't be too overconfident. Uh, Bundesliga, the German top league, uh, they average 37,000. Again, a couple of huge teams at the top, you know, uh, such as Bayern Munich, etc. And uh, average 37,000. And the Premier League, the top English league, averaged 36,000. Um, it had a few teams at the top that had really good numbers, uh, particularly Manchester United. And then as it went down, it actually held up pretty good as to attendance until it got really, really towards the bottom, towards the teams that are in the pro-rel uh, pro zone. Um, so these teams you know, are about 
where Major League Baseball is, right? They're a little bit above Major League Baseball. They're pretty much, no matter how you do it, they're going to be below where the NFL really is in attendance. Um, and, of course, these are all big uh, big leagues as far as uh, television contracts. That's how they're, they're making themselves big. Uh, but it is to show you that those people, the, the amount of people coming to sports in the United States for baseball and football are as good numbers or better than what you're seeing over there. Two sports as what we're seeing over there basically for one top sport. Well, that's it, folks, for this week. Uh, I hope this was at least semi-informative. Uh, if you need to contact me or want to contact me, you can do it through Twitter, at Lammers K. Um, if you want to watch... Uh, go to my blog, which basically uh, where I chronicle the trips I make for, to this or that sporting event. Uh, go to www.minorleaguematters.com. And, you know, if you want to leave comments here, leave them down below. I promise I will try to read all of them. I cannot promise to reply because, you know, that pesky day job where my boss actually expects me to do the work I agreed to do. And I try to do it um you know if you uh like this one hit like if you like everything you're seeing around here hit subscribe and then go watch everything 900 times because that's about the only way i'm ever going to get up to the point where youtube has monetization nowadays just not going to get there folks it's impossible and uh beyond that i've really just got one piece of advice Go watch some minor league sports. Y'all have a good week.